Hey again guys and welcome back. In the last video uh, on the subject we got the DHT11 working and outputting some data to the serial monitor. But you're not always going to have this thing connected to your computer. So today I would like to make it work with this. This is uh, commonly known as a 1602 LCD. It just basically means there's 16 characters in width by uh, two, well, 16 rows and two columns, or 16 columns and two rows. That's what it is. So 16 across, two up and down. And this is specifically the one with the I squared C bike backpack on it. You can get these for about $2.50 uh, as is, like with the backpack and everything on eBay. And I think this is a fantastic little module to use to display some data, especially since here we only have temperature and humidity, so we should have enough um, horizontal characters to display the temperature and then another row for the humidity. So I actually have a video already of how to make this thing work, but I think I'll go through the whole process again because for a lot of us it's it's been a while. Uh, you know, it's been a while for me too. So first and foremost. You can look on the back here, it says ground, VCC, SDA, and SCL. And these are things that we can plug in right away because it doesn't change. So let's start with uh, a ground connection. So I'll take the ground here. And I think I'll go directly onto the Arduino ground. Thankfully, um, Arduino has two ground connections side by side here. But if not, you can always do a little breakout, or there's a few other ground places. There's one there, there's a few up over here. It'll depend on what kind of Arduino you have. Um, and then we want VCC, so I'll use this uh, purple here. And plug that in there. Now I'm using these female to male headers. But if you can, if you use a uh, female to female, you can actually use uh, this header right here. It has the SCL, SDA, five volt, and ground there. So for to pick up the five volt, I'm just gonna go and pick it up from the. There's got to be some sort of V in pin, I think. Yeah, V in down here. Okay, so that should actually, yeah, there we go. Turns on our display. Then we just need SCL and SDA. So SDA, this one here. And you can totally drive this uh, this module, by the way, without the I squared C backpack and drive it directly from the Arduino. But I love how clean it becomes with only a few connections. So uh, that was SDA. I'm gonna plug that over here, SDA. And then SCL right next to it. And then SCL. There we go. And right now we have nothing on the display. That is quite normal because we don't have any code. This is still running the code from the previous, uh, the example from the previous video. So let's go over to the computer and we'll try to write some software using examples from sketches and see if we can mash together something that works. So here we are in the Arduino interface, and this is the example sketch that we put in last time just to get this thing to work. So this thing functions perfectly, and that means that pretty much all the commands we're going to need for the DHT module is on this page. Now, if you know your stuff by heart, you can actually just you know, type in these things and you will get it working. But for me, I usually need a reference. So for the I squared C um, module, I think the library I used was uh, liquid crystal and then I squared C, so I to C. Um, yeah, it was one of these. Oh, this one here. Yeah, there we go. Library for I squared C control of the LCD 03, 20 by 4 and 16 by 2. So this one here is the one that I used. So go ahead and install this library. 
Then we're going to open an example sketch. So it is down here in, this is liquid crystal. There's a specific one for liquid crystal. There we go, I squared C. And if you go into Hello World, this here will tell you the things you need. So include the wire.h library, the liquid crystal I squared C, which you, which you just installed. Then it tells you how to set the LCD address. Then it tells you your setup with your LCD initialize. I'm not sure if you need it twice, but we'll just put it on once. This is to turn on the backlight, then set the cursor, etc., etc. So what we're going to do is we're going to mash up these two examples into a new one and see if we can make it work. Okay, so first and foremost, we're going to try to grab all this. So we know we need this, we need this, and then in the setup, we're going to need those things. So I'm going to copy it and paste it into here. Okay, so we need the address of our I squared C device. Now, I've done this before. Uh, I'll try to put a link in, in the upper corner here, how to figure out what the address of your I squared C device is. Mine is 3F. So if you have the same backpack, you may want to do that yourself. Try 3F, if not, follow the link up top. Um, set the LCD address to the, the address. We're gonna actually just change this to 3F so it's consistent. For a 16 by 2, which is what we have, but you see here it says 20 by 4, so I think the the example is, is uh, erroneous, so we're just going to change this to 16 by 2, like that. And I think we should be good to go there. So that's all we need up top there. Now here we know in the setup we want to initialize the LED, and then we can uh, print something just to make sure it works and set a backlight cursor. Yeah, let's take all of this. We're going to go into our new sketch and we're going to go into the setup here. We can remove this stuff here. And this is maybe not the best way, the ideal way to write code, but nothing I do is going to be ideal. Okay, we don't need to print a message to the LCD. We do want to turn on the backlight, that's good. I'm going to set the cursor to 0, 0, which is, should be the very beginning of it. And then I'm going to print. I don't know if that's too many characters or not, but uh, so basically right now, when we turn on the Arduino, it's going to initialize the LCD it's going to turn the backlight on, it's going to set the cursor to 0, 0, and it's going to print simple electronics. That's all good and well. So now let's see if we can add the code to make the DHT working work. So we know that none of this is required because this is all commented out, but we do know that this is required. So let's pick up all this, and this goes uh, just at the top there. So we can actually put this, there's the includes here, so we're just going to include there. And we're going to define the DHT pin. So this all happens before, I'm just going to put a space in between here. There we go. So this all happens before the setup, so that's good. Now we need to define our DHT type. I'm going to put that in our new sketch. Okay. And we need anything that's not commented out basically. So these two. And then we should be ready to go. If you're an expert coder and this is hurting your head, I'm sorry, but you don't need to be an expert to copy and paste code. I'm just trying to get this working. I don't really care about efficiency right now. 
So this is all our LCD stuff, so I don't think that's necessary. So we're just going to get out of that. This is our custom code. And OK, so now we've got serial begin. Uh, we don't need to start the serial. We, we don't need any serial data at all. So we'll go DHT begin. We're going to keep that. And the sensor T sensor in the setup. So I'm going to do that over here in the setup. DHT begin. We're trying to keep the blocks together from what's from where. So these two we definitely need. Like that. I call this kind of brute forcing the code. If you're not very uh, if you're not very savvy at writing code, this is a good way you can brute force it and make it work. Okay, and we need this as well. Like this. And I'm actually going to add a one second delay here because I want to see this text come on. So I'm actually going to say, um, I forgot what the code for delay is. I believe it's just like this and like that. There we go. Can you tell that I haven't, I don't code on a regular basis? And then I'll go over here. Um, and this delays again, which is fine. So we need this. Meanwhile, I'll just copy this whole block like this, and then we'll work on it in our own code. Okay, so in the void loop, this is the void loop that comes from the DHT stuff. Okay, so it's going to delay with between the measurements. That is fine. Okay, get the event temperature and display its value, the temperature event and display its value. So this is this portion and this portion. Uh, this this will tell you if it can't get the temperature what, uh, what what I'm going to do is have it print an error so that would need uh, we're going to change this because we don't want it in the serial we want it in the actual LCD and then the syntax should be just like this okay and actually, we're going to set the cursor here. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Uh, LCD dot set set cursor, and that will be zero zero, and that should get us the error for reading temperature. And then here we want to change serial.print to lcd.print. Uh, in fact, I don't think the LCD can handle the degrees symbol, so we're just going to put the C and I don't think we have that many sort of rows to deal with so we're just going to get rid of that so it'll print temp uh, probably a comma here a uh, colon sorry so temp semicolon print the event temperature and then C we kind of want to tell it where to put this. So we're going to put um, lcd.set cursor. So this will make sure that our cursor is set to 0, 0. So the first, the, the upper position, all the way on the left. And then temp. And then we need to move the cursor over one two, three, four, five, 
uh, at least five over, so six position six. So we go LCD dot set cursor. like that and then it'll print the event temperature and the event temperature I believe is five characters long because it's um, two numbers a dot and two more numbers so we're gonna have to move it five more characters so LCD dot set cursor eleven zero and then it'll print the C to tell us it's in Celsius. Okay, so you can see how we took the way that they were making this happen and we created it, we were displaying it on our own display our own way. So that's good. I'm going to give this a space here. So again, if uh, the event, I believe this just means that the event hasn't happened, then we want the LCD. I want to set the cursor probably first. So LCD dot set cursor um, to zero one. So that means we want it all the way on the left, but on the bottom row. And then we want uh, LCD dot print like so. Uh, error reading humidity it's good I don't know if it's actually gonna have enough space to write all of that but that's good enough whoops okay and then here LCD dot print now we need to shorten this a little bit because again we don't have too many characters with on this LCD so we're just gonna go HMDT like that that seems about right but again we have to tell it where to print this so we'll go LCD dot set cursor and we want this at 0 uh, 1 like so we'll print that and then we want to set another cursor Uh, whoops, set cursor. Um, again, we want to move it six over, the, the sixth space over, so six, but now on the bottom row. And then we want to print the event, lcd.print relative humidity that's good we want to set the cursor oops LCD dot set cursor so this is a bit long but but don't worry like we're brute forcing here we want to move this to 11 but one because we also want it on the bottom row and then LCD dot print and we want a percentage and I think whoops missing the bracket here aside from the fact that I may have made some um, errors in typing this out I think this might work so I'm just going to confirm that everything is right here um, tools, COM5, my UNO, the AVR ISP. Okay, we're going to send this to the Arduino and then we'll see what we get. So we're back at the bench. We're going to look at this Arduino. Now, I'll tell you, we've brute forced this and I'm not an expert at coding as you have seen. So, don't expect great things. This may or may not work. Let's uh, plug this in and see. Okay, that came up. So LCD is working. Okay, 
Okay, so it is sort of working. I'm not sure if you can see that. So we do have our temp and humidity. We do actually have these, these data points traveling around, but look, there's extra character E, and after the C, we have the onic here. So that's not a good thing. But what's happening here is that we didn't clear the screen. So let's go back and add a little bit of a, a command here to, to clear the LCD. And then it should be OK if you clear between um, putting in the data and um, writing new data. So let's, let's go do that. So I just have the liquid crystal documentation up here. Uh, so I'm just going to scroll down and it looks like lcd.clear with uh, open and close brackets should clear the LCD for us. So we'll just go back to the sketch we made, which is this one here. And so I still want simple electronics to come up at first. So what I'm going to do is after this delay, we just put a delay just so that everything settles down. After that, I'll just uh, tell the LCD to clear. Clear, bracket, bracket, and then semicolon like that. And I think we should be good to go now. So I'm going to upload this, and then we're going to go find out what the heck happened. All right, so we added the new command to clear the screen after we wrote uh, simple electronics on it. So what I'm expecting to happen is that when I plug this in, simple electronics is going to come on the screen. Then it's going to wait a second. It's going to get cleared. And then we should get back to our data. So let's see, plugging this in. There we go. And there we go. So we now have a fully functioning DHT11 Arduino, which we can use as is. This is, um, this is really ready to go. You can mount this on your wall right now. You don't even need to make permanent um, connections or anything. I'm just a little curious as to how much current is being pulled, however, uh, and if I could run this on batteries, for example. So. Let's get a little set up to see how much current is being pulled from the USB here. Got my cheap dollar store power bank here, ready to go. This is the USB cable that's been feeding the Arduino. So I'm going to plug this in here. We're at 4.72 volts. Hopefully that improves as I plug it in. Was it too much? It seems as though this power bank can't provide the necessary current, or maybe it can. Oh, here we go. Okay, 4.92, oh, 4.6 volts. And it takes about 20 milliamps. That's kind of silly that the voltage off this thing is kind of low and it this thing is only pulling 20 milliamps as it is. Yeah, 20.02 amps. That's uh, 20 milliamps. Quite interesting. I don't know if this dollar store power bank's any good, but uh, that's a surprisingly low amount of current for something that pulls, uh, I think this pulls every second or so. Maybe two seconds. I think two seconds was the minimum response time. So it looks like we have an LCD display with an Arduino Uno, a big, a big one. And we're literally only pulling 20 milliamps. So I wonder if we could shrink this project down and use even less current without going into coding, of course. But I think this is where we're going to go next time. And I think this is what we're going to do for today. So if you like this project, make sure you subscribe to see the upcoming stuff. And other than that, thanks a lot for watching.